It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL EA 24. Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the city of angels, Los Angeles, California. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC, as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the LA Chargers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, the wait is over. The regular season is upon us. It is kickoff weekend around the NFL. Our two teams here getting in a final tune-up, but let's look ahead to the 2023 season. What are you gonna be watching for? How about some of the recognizable new faces in new places? Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Odell Beckham Jr. The identity of teams under new coaches in places like Houston, Carolina, and Denver. And then, of course, the rookies. After the draft, we want to see how they perform. kicker that's Cameron Dicker set to get us started and we are underway here in Los Angeles Braxton Berrios now from his end zone and that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20 now Tua Tungabailoa gets set to lead this Dolphins offense for the first time injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season he led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. Tua sets up to pass it. Now, quick throw there is incomplete. He was looking for Jalen Waddle there, and it's third and short. Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. So Tua making the completion there. You know, what's different about playing a left-handed quarterback like him? And specifically, I guess, what does this defense need to try and take away? I'll take the first part that you asked about being left-handed. We've got to find out if he can move to his right and still continue to be accurate. So I want to push him in that direction and see if he can get his body squared around and make those throws that he's used to making. The next part is he's a dart thrower. Loves those short to intermediate routes first. Sit on those and make him throw the deep ball. Not that he's not capable, but you want him to prove it to you first. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Tua. They'll let this go deep for Waddle. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. And the rookie Darius Davis deep for the Chargers. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. 
So the Charger offense making its way out and at the controls is the league's second leading passer a year ago. At 25 years of age out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. The Chargers just continue to improve and take steps forward under the quiet leadership of Herbert, who's been the most productive quarterback in league history through his first three seasons. Over 4,700 yards last year, he's expecting to crack the 5,000 yard mark in this season. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball, and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. Now their versatile running back, here's Austin Eckler. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there, but how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. And the Dolphins beef up the secondary here as they look to stop him on third down. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. One heck of a third down conversion, 33 yards. It's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that'll agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play, moving it downfield. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And credit the tackle to Brandon Jones. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And he'll get this down close to a first down at about the Dolphins' 29. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. Touchdown, Chargers! Josh Paul. And the Chargers are on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that makes the score 7-0. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. Barrios now from his end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Shot in there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. 
Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Back to the air on second down. Tug of Iloa. Pass incomplete. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Tug of Iloa. He'll let this go deep for Waddle. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Chargers in good field position to start out. First and 10 at their own 42. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. Well, they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, 10-plus yards on the guy who has the legs to escape most of these. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Out of the gun, Herbert. His throw incomplete. A partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Gets home, down he goes. Buried behind the line by Christian Wilkins. Wilkins, not known as a sack artist, only eight combined in his last two seasons, but almost 100 tackles and a pair of forced fumbles for the Finns last season. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return. And the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with the first and 10. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum, or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top, or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Here's Tug of Ilo to throw. 
And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's four. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. On second down, Eckler. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Third and three. It's Eckler again. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Here's J.K. Scott set to do the punting honors. Here's Barrios. Found good room to run there, returns it 14 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Two are going to throw. That one behind his receiver and incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing... It's a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well. So give some credit to the defense. Second and 10. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Looking to pass. Tua. That is caught, and he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That's a first down with a cherry on top, 31 yards. Oh, what a play there. They're going to motion a running back out of the backfield and create an empty set. And that puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line because normally that's a pass play where the ball comes out fast. In this case, they have to protect a little bit longer. They take the shot downfield, and it pays off with big yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. Throw left side complete. That's Hill. Call it a gain of a yard, and that will bring up second down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Tug of Iloa to throw on second down here. Open man is Waddle complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28.
Here's third and a few inches. Back to throw again. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play and they got it done there. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. the middle with Eckler and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there so they're left with a third down and six and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance they're just headed straight for the quarterback that was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain that he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five. Fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Dolphins' offense now ready to go back out onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Here's second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Looking to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 
Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes his fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings. For some reason, it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. Up the middle they go with Moster. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. The tackle made at the 24-yard line. A gain of four. It's now second and six. Second down and six now. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And he's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Braxton Berrios, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone, his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, this is the easiest throw you're going to get, and you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it. Make that throw. Sanders now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Here's Darius Davis on the return. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Chargers ready to take over. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula to get them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. And a loose football, but fortunately he's able to cover his own fumble and that could have been trouble but call it luck or skill whatever the case is they're feeling good about just keeping the football there yeah the biggest thing that they're calling it now our ball <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground whether you get it or your teammate gets it just as long as you maintain possession that's all you're looking for here's jk scott now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. Dolphins offense returning to the field. Now their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns. It's got them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an Oh, wide open, complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, it looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps, and delivers a big play here for this offense. And now some disagreement down on that sideline. The red flag is out, and we're going to get a challenge. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Winds up a very good call there defensively to challenge that one, as that now will wind up an incomplete pass. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. You still hold your breath a little as a defense when two gets out of the pocket. You're worried about him scrambling and getting a first down. But there, he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. And this offense on third down today, they've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Escaping the pressure right. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Here's Jake Bailey now. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. From the 41, this is second and a yard. Now it's Herbert looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. And Allen's going to have a Chargers first down up near midfield, spotted at the 48. Herbert with a connection to Allen for a Charger first down. They'll set up to throw, and he'll go right back to Allen. That's complete. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Quarterbacks love slam routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory, down at the 31. Herbert now. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Now a give running left is Eckler. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. And we pause for an injury here. It looks like it's, yeah, it's Keenan Allen who's in some pain down there. More from L.A. in a moment. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Herbert. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. 
picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins are going to have it here as they'll start at their own seven. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one possession game. And that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. And out come the Dolphins now. They got the ball now following a big play, keeping the other guys out of the end zone. Now they'll start deep in their own territory, first and 10. Meanwhile, two is throws taken in by Waddle. And they work this out past the 25. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Well, they were backed up to start the drive, but how about that aggressiveness? Firing it downfield right away. Nice job there getting out towards what would have been their normal starting position. Two and now on first down. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A two big plays right in succession as this one goes for 27. Now they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Kenneth Murray, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. But that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Here's Tua. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? Here, the ball comes out. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. well. This hasn't been their cleanest first half of football. Last thing they wanted to do was give it up to the opposition, but able to keep it as it goes out of bounds. Yeah, tough first half, no doubt about it. But if they turn it over there, now things turn a little, how would you say it, dire? Mm. And they didn't need that hassle at all. So being able to take care of the football is paramount. Fortunate bounce for them there in order to retain it. And Eckler is going to pick up a Chargers first down as he'll get this down to the 40. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Herbert off of play action. That is caught. It's Williams. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one goes for 24 yards. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Eckler now between the tackles. Broken tackle. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way. But you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge. And that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Ball on the 8, second and 2. They're going to go toss right side with Eckler. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. That second down play nets a minus four. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to see? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. 
It's dead. Didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. On the screen, this is Eckler. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a... And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Austin Eckler, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers are an extra point away from drawing level. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that nearly intercepted. Well, the free safety roaming into position, almost had it, but it's second down. My well, man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Back to the air on second down. Tug of Iloa. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead. And it will come back to the spot of the fumble. Good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. A run with Mostert up the middle. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Returnable here for Davis. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Charger defensive unit making their way back out there. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well, where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the ball yeah, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Herbert. And this is caught inside the five. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. It's a gain of 34. And that seemed to me to be all about trusting your receiver. No doubt about it, because when he put that ball in the air, I will guarantee you everyone who's watching this game right now thought, that's up for grabs. But this is a lot of practice time. As you mentioned, a ton of trust. And he knows how good his guy is. So to him, it wasn't up for grabs. To him, it was a big play waiting to happen. Justin Herbert looking to pass. 
This is swung out to Eckler. So no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And that's when it's fun to play defense, when you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play. That's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. On second down, here's Herbert. Touchdown! Gerald Everett in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chargers have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. So they're able to break the tie just before halftime. Now they just don't want anything crazy to happen on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, they want to just add the extra point, get the kickoff taken care of, and get to the locker room with the lead that they fought so hard to get. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead is now 21-14. Just a four-play drive that time. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. All that remains is to snap this once and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Chargers were led in the first half by their star quarterback, Justin Herbert. He fired his guys into the lead with two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep the tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and two. On the give, this is Eckler. And Eckler is going to pick up a Chargers first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. First down, and they stick with Eckler. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. 
But you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Second and six. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Herbert able to show his wheels as he gets the first. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Down the left sideline. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. You yeah, have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. So nothing doing there, and it'll be second down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. Herbert's throw taken in by Palmer. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 19. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They'll try the right side with Eckler. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Once more, here's Eckler. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football. Touchdown, Chargers! And the Chargers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. 
And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and a couple. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Here's Tungabailoa on first and ten. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Now a second and ten. Two are going to throw. Try to lay one up deep. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, when the running game's not working sometimes, you just got to take a few more chances down the field. That's a good effort, but it winds up incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Two and a throw again. there third and long on your own side of the field just couldn't come up with anything that's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down even throwing the football and the putter bailey on now as he sends this one away and this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds the offense heading back out as we take a closer look at Austin Eckler. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Back to throw here, Herbert. Williams brings it in. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. of the gun, Herbert. Finding Williams once more, complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. He's one of the bigger receivers in the game, CD, and his size that time certainly helped against double coverage. Yeah, you're still at a little bit of a disadvantage when you're going against multiple defenders when they're trying to double you and sometimes triple you. But you're exactly right with his build. He can minimize that disadvantage, and he more than held his own and hauled that one in right there. I had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen many of his passes fall incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Herbert throwing again. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Christian Wilkins picks up his second sack of the afternoon. 
And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting a sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. Caught right side, Davis. No, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And right now, Charles, yeah, this is about building that lead little by little. And they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16. So this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet. But that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. Taking it at about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Miami's offense set and ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball. they got his man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 36 yards on the play. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. They fake the handoff, now Tua finds Hill on the crossing route, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. If you're gonna blitz, likely gonna leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. On second down, Mostert. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives them a first and goal. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. That's good hard running right there on first and goal. That gets him down to the two and puts a lot more pressure on that defense. From the two now, second and goal. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Durham Smythe. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins are able to cut into that deficit. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead is trimmed down to 10.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That play over before it got anywhere, thanks to Christian Wilkins. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Third and nine here. Here's Herbert. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And passing yardage wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back, and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Running on first down, Eckler. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. 67 yards on the ground for him so far. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. From the 44 now, here's second and four. It's Charger football, and they've got the lead as well as we begin the fourth quarter. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Now, that's a nice play. <laughs> got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, Everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? A charger first there as Herbert finds Williams. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes you even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. And Herbert going to slide to his stop and he has a first down. 23 yards on the tuck and run. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. Now Herbert with it looking to pass. Completes it to Davis. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Marking down at the 9. The end result, 21 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Herbert now. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. Gerald Everett, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Chargers are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. 
Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Here's Tua. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. Now Tua. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. So he'll be stopped here for no game, and it'll be second down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. Again, they will throw it with Tagovailoa. He'll hit Mostert again here. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31. Defensively, they rally quickly after the broken tackle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Looking to pass to him. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 14. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Defense. Now they'll get the yardage on the run and get 15 more for good measure. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult to spot. You heard the sideline erupting and the flags came out almost immediately. So the face mask moves him closer and now first and goal. Mostert. Is going backwards here. Now they come in and drop him all the way back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Now this likely a must-have third and goal. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
So now fourth and goal. You're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Tua. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Dolphins have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Chargers getting set to go. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. From the 25, here's second and nine. Now it's Herbert. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. Second down and eight. Herbert off of play action. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Herbert. And off his back foot, he'll heave this one deep. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. Miami set to take over. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. He's got a man complete. He's to the 15. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Raheem Mostert, 84 yards. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. 
No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this. And I know you are, too. We got a ball game again after that big time strike. Big time strike. And you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Sanders on for the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taken at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side. And now you know, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And from the 34, here's second and four. Justin Herbert looking to pass. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. And at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Back to throw here, Herbert. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Williams. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and give it instead to Eckler. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Herbert now to throw, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. 
And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Herbert. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. So Tua and the Dolphins down by a field goal. A little under a minute 50 remaining. And the fourth down stop gives him a new lifeline, at least for the moment. Throwing Tua. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And he's brought down after a very nice game. What a time to come up with a play like that. They are now in field goal range. But the opportunity is also there to try and win the game outright. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. Two is thrown complete there to Berrios. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. He has been terrific today, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely running flawless two-minute drill right here. This has been quarterbacking 101 with a flourish. Here's first and goal. Now Tua. And it's caught. From the two now, second and goal. Tua looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Taking the lead here in the final minute. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead. And also, Charles didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win, but they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that will make this a four-point game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. Well, the tides have turned. Now all eyes shift to the Chargers, trailing by four. A little over 20 seconds to go. And they've got to travel the full 75 yards and time is obviously a huge factor here. First and 10. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Herbert going to throw. He's got Eckler. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. Here's first and 10. Now, 
throwing Herbert. That is caught. It's Williams. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. Here's first down. One last throw here for Herbert. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So illegal touching, Charles. If you set foot out of bounds as a receiver, you can't be the first to touch it. You nailed it on that one. You've got to be mindful of the sideline. Partner, what a finish to this one. I mean, this offense, they had it down there inside the red zone, but ultimately couldn't execute that final snap to find the end zone. Yeah, and they're going to walk away from this one, and you know it's going to go through their heads the entire time until they get to play again. If we could only have that final snap to do over one more time, maybe with a different play call. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Southern California.